Fishing is probably the most relaxing activity there is in Sea of Thieves. If you know what you're doing, let's put all of the swashbuckling on the back burner for a moment, put up our feet, and cast a line in the Sea of Thieves fishing guide. Your very first step is to find a body of water, and as you can imagine in a game called Sea of Thieves, water's not that hard to find. You can fish anywhere in the sea itself, or on land if you can find a large enough pond. If you go to the second page of your equipment radial, you'll find your fishing rod. Equip it and attach some bait if you'd like. We'll talk more about bait in a minute, but you don't actually have to attach any to catch a fish. Next, use your primary action key to cast your line out into the water. If you hold down your primary action key, it will cast your line even further. But worry not, the distance you cast your line does not affect your ability to catch a fish. After a few moments, you'll see a fish start swimming around your lure. Just to be patient and wait for the fish to take the bait. Then when it starts pulling the line away from you is when the real game begins. The actual fishing process is basically a back and forth of tiring the fish out, then reeling it in. To tire the fish out, pull the rod in the opposite direction the fish is swimming. So if the fish is swimming to the left, pull your rod to the right. If the fish is pulling to the right, pull your rod to the left. And if the fish is pulling away from you, pull backwards. Note that pulling the fishing rod is not the same as reeling it. Reeling is done with your primary action key, whereas pulling is done with your movement keys. For the most part, you only want to reel when the fish is tired. If you reel too consistently while the fish is pulling away from you, or if you pull your rod the wrong way for too long while you're trying to tire the fish out, then the line will snap and you'll lose the fish. Continue reeling each time the fish tires out, and once it gets close enough, you'll automatically pull it out of the water. Now to decide what you're actually going to do with the fish you've been catching. You can eat them raw to restore a little bit of health, and consequently puke if you eat too much raw fish too quickly, or you can cook the fish before eating it to restore even more health and some of your regeneration bar as well. Additionally, you can sell the fish to one of the hunter's call representatives at any of the sea posts scattered across the map. Fish can be sold raw or cooked, but once again, if you can spare the time, cooking them is generally the better choice since cooked fish will sell for more. If you decide to sell your fish, you'll also make progress on various hunter's call commendations that can reward you with titles and fishing pole skins. Currently, there are 10 types of fish you can find throughout Sea of Thieves. Splashtails, Pondies, Isle Hoppers, Ancient Scales, Plentifins, Wild Splashes, Devilfish, Battlegills, Wreckers, and Stormfish. Each type also has five color variants as well. All of the variants can generally be found in the same manner, but most notably, each type of fish has one variant that can only be found at night. Now, let's talk about where these types of fish can be caught. Splashtails aren't hard to find, as you can catch these fish anywhere in the sea. And the seafoam splashtail is the nighttime variant, meaning it can only be caught at night. Pondies get their name from the fact they can only be found in freshwater ponds. There are currently 10 islands in total with ponds that you can find pondies in, like Devil's Ridge, Cursewater Shores, and even Hidden Spring Keep. Isle hoppers are next, and these particular fish can only be found in waters surrounding large islands. So places like Shipwreck Bay, Ashen Reaches, and Discovery Ridge. This means you're gonna need to do a little sailing if you want to get your hands on each Isle hopper variant. Now to Ancient Scales, and this is where bait starts becoming important. Ancient Scales can be found in the open waters of the Ancient Isles region of the map, but you need to have leeches as bait for them to show up. If you don't have any leeches on hand, you can stop at any island to get them. Just dig along the shoreline where the water meets the beach, and you'll find them in no time. Finding Plentifins is a similar process. They're located in the open waters of the shores of Plenty region, and require earthworms as bait. If you need some earthworms, you can find them on any island by digging in a grassy area. Wild splashes are next, and yet again, the process is similar. These fish are found in the open waters of the wilds region, and you need to use earthworms as bait to lure them out. Devilfish are the last regional kind of fish, and can be found in the open waters of the Devil's Roar. But this time, you're gonna need grubs as bait. To find the grubs you need, you simply need to dig in the sandy terrain of any island. Battlegills are a very peculiar fish, 
Being attracted to danger, they only ever appear in the water around skeleton ships or active forts of all places. As if that didn't make finding them difficult enough, you also need to make sure you're using grubs as bait to lure them out. Wreckers are an interesting fish that can only be found near shipwrecks, and you're going to need earthworms as bait to attract them. Not only do wreckers have a nighttime variant, the moon wrecker, but there is an additional variant called the black cloud wrecker that can only be found during storms. So that means to find the black cloud wrecker, you're going to need earthworms, a shipwreck, and that shipwreck also needs to be inside of a storm. Lastly, our stormfish. As I'm sure you can guess by now from the naming convention, these fish can only be found inside of heavy storms, and they require leeches as bait. You can tell once a storm is considered heavy if your compass is spinning and the ship's bell is ringing from the wind. The ancient, shores, and wild stormfish all require you to be in the regions they're named after. Shadow stormfish can be caught during any storm, and they are simply harder to find. And twilight stormfish are the typical nighttime variant. Depending on how quick you are with your reeling, you might find yourself at a point where the fish is still fighting you and it's just a few inches away from being caught. If you're careful, you can actually tap the reel button to slowly pull in a fish while you're fighting against it. This really can be done at any point, whether the fish is far away from you or close, but the amount you're able to reel without breaking the line is pretty minimal, so it's best to save this maneuver for when a fish is almost in your grasp. The shadow stormfish can be a pretty difficult fish to get your hands on, due to its rarity and also because of how many other fish can show up in the same spots it's located at. Two great places in particular to hunt down the shadow stormfish are the Glorious Sea Dog Tavern or the Uncharted Island at N13. Neither of these places are considered to be in any region, and because of that, the kinds of fish in the spawn pools at these areas are limited to just splash tails, the twilight stormfish, and the shadow stormfish. Since the twilight stormfish can only be found at night, that means if the storm passes over one of these spots during the day, the only possible fish in the spawn pool at the time are splash tails and the shadow stormfish. So if you're having trouble finding the shadow stormfish, use this fact to your advantage. That just about covers everything you need to know about fishing in Sea of Thieves. For the most part, it's a pretty relaxing activity, and it can be rewarding in its own way to complete the various fishing commendations in the game. At the very least, even if you're not looking to grind out commendations, you can still use fishing to earn a little bit of gold or some pretty good food for your next adventure. Don't forget to subscribe for even more Sea of Thieves content, and I hope you enjoyed.